welcome to the stream. You're not. Enter! The next stage of suffering. Well, I assume it's going to be suffering. I don't know. Maybe I should get the one out of the way that I feel like will be the most suffering. End of another week, we are in December officially, so... It's been busy. Busy, busy, busy. Just getting stuff done before uh, the year wraps up. Also binged the hell out of JoJo yesterday, so that's all done. Completely forgot that Stone Ocean was coming out yesterday, so I watched it all. Guess I guess here. This didn't seem too bad, to be honest. I also questioned the value of the cape, but we shall see. Pretty much a don't hesitate type scenario. With the exception of that. I bricked it. Oh! Salvaged. Nah, <sighs> I bricked it. <laughs> I mean, let me see what the cape does, but I don't think it's gonna help too much. I think this one's just straight up platforming and nothing else. Rid of one cape, okay. So either way, it's always gonna get rid of it. <clears throat> I think at the very least, it makes shit. <sighs> I was gonna say it makes that part a bit easier. Let's just grab one cape and go. Because it doesn't matter since it's gonna get replaced anyway. Thank you. 
I mean, maybe I can strategically swap between the two so I have regular jumping. Or that's just gonna happen. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Ugh. I'm not sick, just dust. I did some vacuuming. Just that little hesitation that I feel like, yep, you could feel it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the cape's doing me that many favours. Like, I think this is just straight up. Classic platforming. Oh, you dick. Why didn't that work? They have to crouch jump there. It's it's another one of these things where like being big is a liability. Okay, here we go. Felt like I wasn't gonna make it. second time. It's not easy. I was gonna say, I was kinda lucky. What do you mean? Ah. I'm not quite sure how I took damage though. Ugh. 
I'm trying to take advantage of the iframes as much as I can, but... Ugh. Why is that happening? I think I just needed to let it get back up. Ugh. doesn't just let you rush through it. That'd be cool if it did. I don't get this part here. Is that just a check that you haven't taken damage? Like, is it really just... A damage gate. How am I supposed to get through this? Okay, like that. That's so rude. Can I alt? Can I scroll across? Kinda. But that perspective is, is a bit weird. Okay. 
now I can see it. What is this? Damn it. Nearly. Don't tell me I have to do this whole thing again. Ugh. No checkpoint. You know what? I don't mind this stage. Hard as it might be, it's still just jumping at the end of the day. It's not like the previous one that just dragged. <laughs> uh. I think I can reliably get through this first area, more or less. <laughs> ah, just die. It's okay, the Mario movie is going to tell us how Mario becomes like this. <laughs> Suppose suppose it's accurate, like I'm dying and tripping over stuff. Low ceiling stuff. Who made this level? Ah, okay. That explains it. I've noticed the other stages this person's made just tends to be very claustrophobic. Oh. A lot of this, oh, you have to crouch to jump, otherwise you won't make it type stuff. What is that? Very so much. I feel like sometimes I make it perfectly, and then I... I don't know, like, I, I don't do anything different, but then the timing's different. Hmm. 
Okay. Should have slowed it down. I'm just gonna go back. jump so much. Everything else, very comfortable doing. No! Oh, damn it. Oh, man, that was a good run. Almost got through that with both upgrades. It just didn't have the correct trajectory. These off screen hazards. I think that's the jump that I'm messing up the most right now. Ah, I don't land on that. Okay, well. Guess I'm small now. I do enjoy the levels this person makes, it's just uh, the low ceiling jumps are, are kind of annoying. But you got used to them. Hey, Pat, thank you so much for the raid, how's it going? How's the stream? I'm dead. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear.
This is still better than the previous stage. You're playing a puzzle game called Inversity, or Inversity? Never heard of that one. What's that about? Crouched. Okay. Inverting gravity while being a news reporter. Oh. Let me look that up. That sounds intriguing. I'm always on the lookout for new stuff. I'll add it to wish list. Because it's like 2150 Australian, which. I mean, there are sales coming up, so. It does look interesting. Ah, oh, Savine, thank you for the follow. What in the name of Hylia happened in this overworld? <laughs> you know what? The reason we're here, Mario started running in a stage and then ran so fast that he ran at the speed of light and died and then we woke up here. I, I believe that's how you get to this area. So I guess each of these stages are like a fracture in reality. I don't know. Maybe... This is telling the origin story of the Mario movie, you know? I don't know. <laughs> if you haven't seen this before, this is Janked Up Mario Party. It's it's a ROM hack. Um, I like it because it's got stages that are creative. And it also mixes in stuff that is difficult, but not too difficult. So... I've been trying to finish it and slowly getting there. I don't mind this level, Pat. I don't mind this level at all. But I guess that's just saying that because the previous stage... I don't know. Like, they're just jumping challenges, this one. I can get more on board with it because I don't need to know anything specific about it. Unlike the previous one where there was these like highly specific techniques that you had to do to complete the stage, which I'm never a fan of that stuff. You know what, Savine, I'll show you the level because I like the level. <laughs> Plus it'll let me take a little mental break around it, but it will give you an idea. But this is a, a pretty good ROM hack. It's very extensive in the number of levels. Wait, how? Oh, no, wait, it's the other way. Yep, yep. This way. Also called Back to the Future, which is one of my favorite movies. So, you know, auto scroller. Oh, damn it! I <laughs> got bamboozled. It's worth a look because it starts off um, difficulty wise probably a little bit more trickier than the special stages in vanilla. And then it kind of ramps up, and anytime you need to do something tricky, it does its best to explain it to you. And it does cool stuff like, uh... The dragon coin- ah! The dragon coins have meaning. You collect them and you get upgrades. Oh god. 
Oh, I didn't spin jump. Damn it, I almost had it. Okay. One more try. I just needed to spin jump and I would have done the thing. <laughs> so one of the upgrades I have is Mario, regardless, will start big. Which is kind of cool. Ah, I messed it up. One more try. <laughs> the levels are designed by a bunch of people as well. Can you scroll? No, so this is on rails, you just jump. Crap. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I might still be able to make this. No. <laughs> this is pretty good, uh, in terms of that. Like it... I don't know, maybe it does. No, okay, it disables at the moment the segment starts. It disables at the moment the segment starts, so that's fine. Yeah, it's level by level basis, and in some cases it even rebinds scroll to do something else. Like, there's one called Bridge Constructor where you pick up boxes and then L scroll basically drops the box and makes like a little bridge. Why am I doing this level? I just, I just want to show Mario obliterate himself. <sighs> I missed. Just iframe it. Iframe to win. No. Impatient. I'm not that great at this, but I've slowly gone through the hack. Like, I'm, I'm at the tail end of it. I think there's six or so levels left. Okay. Last time, I promise I'm gonna get it this time. Watch. You watch. I grew up with this game, so, like, I'm being stubborn with it, because my inner child is just screaming that I can't finish the level. <laughs> like, right now, it's... Inner child's like, come on, dude, you're better than that. I think my eight-year-old self would be able to do this first try. Why? Why? <laughs> doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. I'm a grown man, I promise. I'm not, I'm not gonna be like, oh, uh, doesn't count. I was on pause. We were on pause, so it, it doesn't count. Why did that have so much acceleration? <laughs> when you were playing through this with a friend, you always ended on this level. This level's great. I think this is one of my favorite ones. The other one, um... I mean, not to spoil too much, but... Let's just say it involves guiding an idiot through a stage. Go. 
Got it. All right. And then you end up here. <laughs> That's it. I should have queued up the the Mario movie trailer just in the background. And just have Chris Pratt go, let's -a go. This is me, Chris Pratt, and my Mario voice that I said was going to be unique. But it's really just my voice. That's not how Chris Pratt sounds like, but you know. It may as well be. I don't know. Why couldn't we have Charles? Like... I think you didn't need a Hollywood name to kind of sell that movie. It's one of those things that kids that are going to be entertained by it, they're not going to know who Chris Pratt is. So it's going to be irrelevant to them. And then the people that are old enough to have grown up with this will appreciate that Charles is doing the voice. It's like, why would you... Yeah, anyway. The ship has sailed, but... I don't know. But it's two trailers in and I'm still not convinced with that voice. Cape is a liability, it might be. You don't even know who Chris is and you'd like to believe you're a little older than a child. I mean, okay, stuff that he's been in, uh, Parks and Rec, the TV show. Um, he was in Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, whatever it is. Uh, the Lego movie, he was the main character in that. He's going to be Garfield, which, okay. Damn it. <laughs> what else has he done? You haven't watched any of that. Well, you're missing out with Parks and Recreation, like... It's a pretty good TV show. It's got one of the best characters ever. But the other stuff's like, yeah, understandable. I feel like I'm mi Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. He's Star-Lord. Yeah, there you go. I missed the big one. You're very picky on your TV shows and movies. That is honestly fair enough. Especially these days where, um, I saw an interesting conversation where they were talking about how we don't re really make movies now anymore. It's pretty much any movie that comes out now, aside from the superhero stuff, which has established plots already, more or less. Um, movie studios don't really take any risks anymore and they're just producing the same six movies and these days like you go see a movie and most of the time you already know the plot within the first 10 minutes if not just with the trailer like okay there might be a little variation here and there but it's essentially the same story being told all over and over again because that's what sells No, I, I agree with it. Um, there's, there's a lot of people that have said the same thing lately. It's kind of the same with charted music as well. It's just the same six pop stars collaborating with one another. Anyway. 
So I can appreciate being highly selective of what you watch. Also, a certain sport being the sole exception. English. Well done. What, what sport? I'm not a sports person, but intrigued. Wait, you were disappointed by the new Spider-Man movie, Gamma? The, um, the Tom Holland one? I mean... I think I enjoyed it just because nostalgia. That's more or less it. That carried it. <sighs> I, I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> You're gonna be honest, none of the Tom Holland Spider-Mans are actually good, you said it. Well then... If you're saying that, you're probably not a fan of 80s cinema, because that's what those movies are. They're just effectively taking heavy inspiration from that era, like Ferris Bueller and all that stuff. Translation Formula One. Okay, I gathered that. The name was Italian, so it, I definitely wasn't gonna guess, like, a. Uh... Damn it, what's- what's that- What's that thing that Americans watch? Where it's just people going in a literal circle in cars? NASCAR! Yes, that. I wasn't gonna guess that. No one with that surname would be involved in NASCAR. At least I don't think. Um, Formula One's big in Australia as well. We got the, uh, particularly in Melbourne, there's like an annual event. If you enjoy 80 cinema, do not enjoy the Tom Holland spider man Fair enough. To each their own. Italian Latifi is Canadian. Is the name the uh, like it sounds Italian to me? I don't know. Okay, let me put it this way: it, it's not. It sounds foreign enough that I wouldn't believe that it was a NASCAR racer. European, either way. That's honestly the easiest way to upset a European, is to say that their surname sounds like it's from another country. <laughs> oh, that! Okay, I made it. Come on, Europeans, you know this is true. Such a hot. Okay. Oh no! Ooh. You'd argue the easiest way to insult a European is to compare them to the French. <laughs> Savine, you wouldn't happen to be British, would you? Because that, that sounds... I have a... A boss that is British, and it just sounds like something that a British person would say. Like, they're very easy to just... ...say something like that about the French. <laughs> Make it! Gah. Nah? Okay, got ya. The French are, like, very low-hanging fruit <laughs> when it comes to that.
Your country did, however, also invade the French. Okay, interesting. In the previous century? Or like earlier? It's that same jump that I just keep messing up. I just hate those low ceiling jumps. No! <laughs> I still enjoy this stage. It's fine. I, I'm still enjoying it. I might be dying over and over again, but at least it's enjoyable, unlike the previous stage. The previous stage, I felt like my soul was being ripped out of my body by the end of it. And yet, I still kept playing. Speaks volumes about me as a person. Then again, the answer to that would be something along the lines of, do you have any idea how little it narrows it down? No, that's true. I guess that's why I asked in the previous century, because th that would be like, number one guess would be Germany. So. I do want to visit Germany one day. That's like on there on my list of countries to visit. Just because it's different. And it's somewhere where it can get colder than what it is here. What well, part of Germany? Anywhere, to be honest. I'd have to ask, uh, in law. Because, uh, yeah, she's German. She'd probably be able to recommend stuff. But, yeah, I mean, Japan and Northern Europe, pretty much, as it's, from a climate perspective and a cultural perspective, it's different, so. Oh, come on. But just out of curiosity, where would you recommend if I was to say, hey, I want to go to Germany. I'm hopping on a plane, where should that plane go? There's proper Germany, sort of Germany, the east, and then there's not Germany. Bavaria, gotcha. I, I don't know. Crap. <laughs> okay, from a, from a food perspective, right? I definitely want to go do a night, go eat pork knuckle, because I've had that here, and the that stuff is delicious. So somewhere where they can load me up on that, I'm happy. I don't know if I want to do the whole touristy thing, but maybe a couple of things that are, I guess, iconic wouldn't be a bad idea. The North Sea is a very nice vacation spot. Okay. See, that's good. I'm terrible with names, and I just have to remember the North. It's great.
So one thing I appreciate about the German language is just sometimes there, there's just a literal word for everything. suck. If I don't want to do the tourist thing, then Eiffel is the place to go. Very mountainy, far away from everything, its own beauty. What do I mean by that? Um, well, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but you know, the word that means to laugh at someone's misery. Basically. Like, that's a highly specific word that if you were to- you, there's no word for it in English. It's a sentence in English. I know what the word is, I just don't want to pronounce it and embarrass myself. <laughs> that's all. I know what the word is. It is that. And some of them are just straight up hilarious, like... Contraception, what is it, anti-baby- it's- it's almost literally anti-baby pill. And then, German Pokemon, like, um, Lickitung is Schlurp. That's <laughs> awesome. That's much better than the English one. There's a couple of others that are, are really good, but I- Schlurp is the one that sticks with me. All right, Snorlax is Relaxo. Another, another great one. If I ever play Pokemon again, and there's a Snorlax, I'm gonna call it Relaxo. Ah, oh, come on. And here you're gonna ask if we don't have a word for beef labeling supervision duties transfer act. <laughs> One of my favorite videos for a while, um... Because I'm a bit of a nerd on semantics and, I guess, language, and I... English was a language that I had to learn as a kid. Um, it wasn't my first language. So... I just, I hate English as a language. It's, it's so stupid. And even today, just at work, like, uh, had to decide on the labeling of a button. And we had to pick the terminology for it. And, you know, one of the junior designers comes up and says, Hey, um, I don't know whether we should label this all status or all statuses. I was like, okay, well, if I follow the rules of English, it should be status, because then... The word is the plural, right? It's one of those cases where you don't need to add the ES to make it a plural. And then I thought about it and I'm like, but you know what? I bet your English is that messed up that both are acceptable. And I was right. <laughs> I'm not even gonna um, attempt to pronounce it, but at least I know the... Uh... the word. But no, the video I'm talking about is... um. It's a German tongue twister. It's about Barbara. And I don't- I don't know German, but I can follow along and it's- it's hilarious and... It just, I guess, exemplifies why I think the language is cool. Because it just becomes this one long word and it's- it's a sentence, more or less. I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. If not, I'll dig it up. Is it Rabarbara? Yeah, that one. It's amazing. Okay. 
Made it. The story is stupid. Yeah. But I mean, I, uh, English story is any better. Like, let's look, let's look at the plot of Romeo and Juliet. Underage teens just getting involved in shit that you know, by today's standards. Why are we teaching that in school? That's... Uh, I'm stealing a family guy bit there, but you know. Have I seen the German interpretation of Romeo and Juliet? I have not. Wait, what? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, come on. No! Okay. You've piqued my interest. What is this German interpretation of Romeo and Juliet? What should I be looking for here? Because... Yeah. If it's one of these things where it's a very similar story, but then there's... Details where it's just amazing. <laughs> Get the fuck out, that's the name of the movie. It just sounds, it just looks like it says fuck you goth. But uh, I'm not gonna be... Like, oh, that's what it means. I'm sure it means something else. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna put it... Ah! Let me throw it in search. It's intentional misspelling of fuck you go goeth. 2013 comedy film, okay. Oh, this looks right up my alley. I think I'm gonna check this out. <laughs> I like I like weird movies. Well, not, I'm not to say that this is weird, just stuff that is not common, I guess. Just stuff that, you know, is good in conversation. I'll have to see if I can dig it up. Very much humor of your youth. Excellent. I'm still I'm still looking for it. There's a trailer for it. <laughs> Wait, is it on Netflix? No. No, it's not. Okay, it's gonna say. Of course it's not on Netflix Australia, because... I hate- I hate that so much. Just when you look for movies, the result comes up, but then it's- you go- you click it, and it's always, I'm sorry, this is not available in Australia. Here's a fun little fact. For a lot of uh, TV shows, Australia has the highest rate of piracy in the world. Just because of how stupid it is here. 
in terms of media availability. At this point, you're not convinced the English version of the movie exists for real. Oh, I don't care. Like, even if it's um, subtitled, I'll, I'll watch it. Or... I can ask, uh, I can ask my brother's girlfriend and be like, Hey, listen, can you serve as interpreter for this movie? Tell me what's going on. I might ask her if she's even heard of it. I mean, I don't mind movies that have a low intellectual standard. I particularly enjoy movies that leave you just going, okay, what actually just happened? Like, one movie I'm a fan of that... is, uh, was quite the experience. If you've never heard of Funky Forest, and you want to, um, get some brain rot, that's, that's a movie to watch. It's a Japanese movie. And I honestly wouldn't be able to tell you the plot because I'm not sure myself, but... It's just a bunch of stuff that happens and... It is... Quite possibly the strangest movie I've ever seen. It's got a cult following. To the point where they made a sequel. I haven't seen the sequel. But it's as unhinged as the original, if not more so. If you wanted Brain Rod and had to involve the Japanese, you'd watch the Japanese Spider Man movie. I haven't seen that myself. But it can't it can't be as bad as Funky Forest. Like I, I don't I don't think I don't think you realize just how much rot we're talking about, like... Look up the trailer for Funky Forest. It, I have no doubt that it's wild, but I don't think it's Funky Forest wild. I think Funky Forest just... <laughs> I don't know. I'm hyping it up, but it's just, yeah. Go, go check out the Funky Forest. I'll await the verdict as to which is stranger. Crap. The stage needs a checkpoint. I mean, I can do this reliably, it's just... Ah, oh, that jump. <laughs> Every time there's like a 50-50 chance I don't make it. It's that low ceiling. And it's this level designer, it's just... All their stages do this at some point. Japanese Spider-Man. I might have to make a movie night out of that. <sighs> I thought I wasn't gonna make it. I should have just... Wow. <laughs> I had to believe, I didn't believe. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, the movie... I guess if I was to try and describe it... It's a bunch of little skits, and all of them, the... it's... I'm convinced the director had to be on something. Just some of the topics and just how the stuff pans out, and then it all contributes to an overarching story, loosely. But there's stuff in it where 100% they, they had to have been on something. There's, there's no way. Trying not to hesitate, but it just it doesn't work. That movie was YouTube Germany before YouTube Germany existed as a community. What is this about the German YouTube community? See, this this is an in joke. Is that is that a rabbit hole that I don't want to go down? I can't help but laugh. That was that was bad. So you know this this is what this rum hack is at this point is just a level's gonna take at least an hour if not longer. that one jump, if, if I could remove it, I think I could get this every time. Just that low ceiling. Oh, that was close. That's a rabbit hole that I'll come out of with brain damage. YouTube Germany is bad. Very, very bad. Like, you can feel your intelligence draining from you every second you watch bad. Oh no. Okay, noted. I mean, unless I, it had subtitles anyway. Like, is it one of those things where it's verbal rot or is it visual rot? Or both. Yes. Okay. Noted. Ah! <laughs> no. Ah, I'm getting closer. There has to be a checkpoint after this segment. It's everything rot. Gotcha. I mean, I, I don't mind, uh, rabbit holes. But 
I'm very cautious as to which ones to go down. Like, the most recent rabbit hole was just shitty American frozen food and cookbooks. And I don't know how some of it can even pass for... for food, really. Particularly the, the cookbook that stunlocked me quite a bit was um, the noodle cookbook. The instant ramen cookbook, I should say. Making dishes out of instant ramen. Wait, if I want a rabbit hole, I should watch Ahoy. Ahoy? That's kind of uh, generic in terms of a name, what is Ahoy? Also, hello, Laura. How's it going? A YouTube channel making documentaries out of things. Okay. I mean, one channel that I, I watched quite a bit before it... It's kind of been quiet for a while, but, um... It was literally called Down the Rabbit Hole. And it was, um... Some of that was on documentaries on weird little things that happened in history, like, um... These two brothers that were famous hoarders in, um, New York City. And it was to the point where it's still a, um, I guess an expression over there. They still refer to to them in, uh, in just general conversation, but most people don't know why. And then he also does stuff on internet history, like famous arguments on the internet or uh, just batshit insane rants, that sort of stuff. It's worth checking out the channel. Hasn't really done any new videos lately, but there's enough there to have a few hours of uh, viewing. What was the channel called? Uh, Down the Rabbit Hole, and the dude's name is Frederick Knudsen. He does, if you're into, um, like, computer stuff, he does one on the guy that made, uh, Temple OS. He was the guy that was convinced that God was speaking through him through programming. And he made his own operating system. That's certainly an interesting take. Yeah, it's... It's a sad story, but, like, it's it's interesting to watch it, just because, um... There was a thing where the dude was... He was brilliant, from a fundamental point of view, like... He was doing things that a lot of programmers... It's hard to find programmers that can do some of this stuff. But then, on the flip side, he was just... Yeah, <laughs> just, I guess he, uh, he had his issues and it led him to believe that God was speaking to him through this operating system that he was making. And it was one of those things where, like, you, if you talk to the guy about programming, he would be completely lucid. It'd sound extremely intelligent, collected. 
but then would just go off on a tangent on like some conspiracy theory. So, pretty sad, but it's an interesting watch. Um, another one I found interesting was um, they they did one. Well, I should say they, but he did one on um. It was the the Austrian wine crisis. And how Austria's uh, wine industry was basically destroyed for a few decades. That one was an interesting one. And then on the side of um, internet culture, this uh, this famous one of some lady in America that was opening a cat cafe, and then. This, uh, this worker exposed this lady saying, you know, she wasn't really setting up something that would be good for, for pets. It was horrible. And then it turned into just this massive, um, massive debate, just d people's names being drugged through the mud, just like... In it's insane how- how crazy this person was, just... ...believing that they were correct. When they were quite clearly like, no dude, you- no. <laughs> you shouldn't be anywhere near animals. Let alone running a business, like, what are you doing? So, yeah, if you got time, uh, highly recommend that channel. There's quite a bit of stuff there. Um, you'll probably find something that's interesting. Again, dude's not really as active anymore. He, I think he puts one video out a year, but when he does, it's pretty uh, lengthy. It's well researched. So, I recommend. <laughs> Try and focus. I really want to make progress on this. Reset it. I, I, I messed it up. Do it again. Ugh. Best I've ever done. Another channel I can recommend is Internet Historian. Partly meme and part serious documentary. Oh yeah, no, I've, I've seen a bit of internet historian stuff. There's another interesting one that's, um... Ha! Ah, no, I slipped! That's up for- people are debating whether or not this really existed. But, um... So the content is called Gaming in the Clinton Years. And it's a bunch of videos that supposedly were produced for public access television. Um, in the early 2000s. There were video game reviews, more or less, and they were done by this guy where... If you were to put it in the context of today... It's someone that is just straight up trolling, like trying to get the the rise of someone that's a fan of the game. But so the interesting thing is people are debating whether it's just 
some very well produced content that is trying to get the vibe of um that era which it does really well like or if it's something that really did happen and yeah i don't know there's just constant debate about it but the video is if you're into retro gaming and just or just played games right growing up you just look at a review for one of those games like he tears apart he tears apart final fantasy 7 for example like one of the most beloved games and it, it's just i don't know i'm convinced it's not real but you never know It's just one of those things that, I, I don't know about TV over there, but even with the TV stations here that I guess, they're not really public access, but they're owned by the government, like, you still have to submit what you want aired on television, and someone ultimately has to sign off on it. And some of the stuff, I'm like, there's no way someone would have signed off on that. Unless they genuinely didn't care about their job. So, I don't know. Oh, you can just do that. Okay. Oh. TV these days here is garbage. Oh, it's the same here. I think it's the same everywhere. It's... Australian television right now is reality TV, renovation shows, and sports. That's basically it. had a really good show on MTV called Game One in the early 2000s. Uh, before they, um, they shifted their focus. looked much at Australian YouTube content, but I know that like a big thing in Australian media, um, at least in the early 2000s, I know it still exists today to some extent, and it's a bit weird, but whatever. It's, um, it's TV shows that usually play around a stereotype, whether that be like low socioeconomic or immigrants, more or less, and they're not played by Australian people, like, they are actually played by immigrants, but... That's more or less a lot of the original Australian programming that, I guess, becomes popular, like... You take that show, Kath and Kim, that's the stereotype of, like, low socioeconomic bogan Australians. I have everything more or less memorized and I can do it. It's just that one jump. It's every time I get to it. 50-50 chance. Ah. It's okay.
I shouldn't have done that. I should have just slowed down. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a while since I've watched anything that is considered Australian in terms of a TV show. So. I'm just thinking of the ones that I've been aware of just because of relatives that watch it. It's like on the periphery. Crap. Okay. <laughs> well. <sighs> can't watch much Australian TV, the racist tones you can't take. No, I, I get it. I mean, I just said it then. It's... It's a bit weird that Australian TV is still like that. Because, okay, I understand, in the early 2000s it kind of made sense because those shows, there was still um, a sense of, well, these people were probably first generation immigrants, right? Either they were, like myself, right? Um, came from families that immigrated to Australia and then they grew up in Australia. But these new shows, I don't know, man, like, some of these kids, they're not first generation. They probably have parents <laughs> that are Aussies. Like, in every respect of the word. And then they just do the stereotype thing. I don't know, it's, it's a sense of humor that... At one point as a teenager, I did find funny because I went to high school with a lot of people and I have relatives that kind of behave that way, right? First generation. But that humor gets old very quickly and it's just like, eh. It's just kids making fun of their parents at, at a certain point, you know? Parents that went through a lot of hardship to give them a better life. Just... I don't know. I have the perspective as well, because like, as a kid, I didn't speak English properly, so... It's like, yeah. It's not easy, dude. I lost the mushroom, but I, at the very least, salvaged it. I'm a... I have... There's two levels that I, I have to do. And I'm pretty sure the other one I'm gonna be more frustrated at. Because the other one is... Is one of those stages where it just punishes the player instantly. Whereas in this one, it's, it's just... It comes down to muscle memory, ultimately. Like, a lot of this I'm not even actively thinking about, it's just... Do the move and it should work out. Except this one, this- Oh, this jump! <laughs> Aside from that single jump there, everything else, autopilot. I can talk as I- as I play. Because I don't need to think. It's just... Instinct. But the other stage is just straight up masochism. I can even show it for a minute just to take like a little mental break from it. But. Okay, 
Okay. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll show you the other stage I have to do. I think this one's the lesser of the two evils, but just to take a little mental break. I mean, okay, just ig ignore that. That had to happen anyway. But this, oh yeah, well, that's it. That's it. First five seconds, kill the player. If... Do you see this? This is the the other choice I have in terms of levels. I don't personally enjoy these kind of levels, but I guess I have to suck it up. Alright, I'm going back to the other stage. The other stage is... I... I can enjoy the other stage. As difficult as it might be, it's not that. Oh wait, I went to the wrong star. You know what? I want to hear this song. I'm going to get a bottle of water, but I want to have this playing in my headphones whilst I do. Because the song is amazing. I'll be back in five seconds. Dude, anything from Donkey Kong, it's great. I didn't like this level either. <sighs> but the music... The music allowed me to do that sage and not really be stressed about it at all. The song is uh, in a snowbound land from Donkey Kong 2. Donkey Kong Country 2. Part of me just wants to go and play Zelda 2. I've been playing the, uh... The PC remake, I guess is what I've been calling it. And it's been really good. I'm kind of surprised at how much extra content it has. Crap. It's turned it into a game that's closer to the other Zelda games. <sighs> that jump. <laughs> There's just something about low ceiling jumps that I just, I can't do them. Reliably. I might play through the Donkey Kong games for Christmas, because tradition here is... I'll generally pick a game from childhood and play it. It's usually the Christmas tradition. 
Last year I did Mario 3, which was fun. Oh, almost ruined it. Okay. Honestly, the mushroom doesn't matter, because... I guess it... It doesn't really matter. Most likely, if I fall, I die anyway. It is a bit of a safety net for this, I guess, but... <sighs> well, it's definitely got it correct. It's depraved. I just wish there was a checkpoint there, like... Reward me for my, my skills. <laughs> okay. We're good, we're good. Timing. I got so close that one time, but I was bamboozled by the, the jumping statue. And I haven't really done much better since. You know, one thing that, that didn't occur to me about the Mario movie, that, um, someone made a very valid point about it, particularly the Mario voice. So, it sounds like Chris Pratt is doing his own voice for it. And the voice is an American accent. But then when he does the, uh, the Wahoo line, or, you know, let's go. He does it with the Italian. The Italian stereotype, I guess. Like, like trying to do Charles Martinet's voice, which... Charles's version of Mario is, is more Italian. Or at least attempts to be. Not, like... You know what I mean. It's trying to sound like it's Italian. It's not an American accent. Let's, let's put it that way. It's not an American accent. So, if this was for real... He would have one or the other. He wouldn't have both. He would either be like the 1980s Mario, which has the Brooklyn accent, right? An American accent. Or he would be like Charles, where it's some sort of foreign accent. But it would never be both. So when he, when he does the Yahoo line, it's like, huh. So he's just some American dude, like, just doing a funny voice. He's, it's, that's not his voice. Like, you can't have both. You 
they didn't even cast a real plumber, what, like Bob Hoskins? <laughs> Bob Hoskins and the clearly Latino John Luiziamo. I don't know, I, I like Charlie Day as Luigi. I think Jack Black as Bowser, it sounds right. But, yeah, it's just that Mario voice, like... Okay, putting aside the fact that it's always gonna be an uphill battle in terms of accepting that that's the Mario voice. Regardless of who they cast, that was always gonna be an uphill battle. I still... I don't believe that Chris Pratt is even doing a voice. <laughs> Yes! By the way, I'm, I'm Nintendo, I'm available to do the Warrior voice in the sequel, you know? Just end credit scene, just have me appear. And I will gladly voice Warrior in the sequel. Crap. If I was to predict it, I would say that that would be what's going to happen, is post credit sequence is setting up the sequel and it's going to be Wario as the antagonist. Calling it now. And it just goes back to <laughs> just the previous comment of just movies being formulaic, like you already know. The interesting thing for me will be, I like that Princess Peach is going to have a persona beyond like, oh no, I got kidnapped. Um, I think Peach, the, the times they have used her the best have been in the Paper Mario games because she actually has a personality and does something. But it'll be interesting to see if they keep this new Peach personality. Because it would be a bit weird if this movie releases and you know, a bunch of kids, they become fans of Princess Peach and then only for the next Mario game to come out and then she's just like a helpless princess again, I don't know. I like the direction, I just hope the games just reflect that, you know? But the more I see this movie, the more I'm convinced that it's gonna be Mario is a buffoon for like 90% of the movie. He's effectively the minion. And I mean minion like, you know, those yellow creatures from that movie. from Despicable Me. Yeah, just iframe it. Okay, or not. That That's fine. <laughs> I've almost... I've almost used a hundred lives on this. Ugh. I've made progress, the problem is it just- there's no checkpoint. And I'm playing this on hardware, so there's no save states either, it's just... Get good. <laughs> it's always this jump. I've got the rest of it down, it's just this jump. Maybe I, I'm just not... I'm overthinking it. 
every time I get to that jump, I become conscious of the fact that I'm playing the game. Whereas I think everything else up to it, it's almost autopilot. Even if I take a hit, I'm, I'm just like, okay, it's fine. Shake it off. Don't worry. It's okay. But this, this right here. <laughs> I hate it. If it wasn't for that single jump, I think I could get through this 90% of the time. I think that's the problem I'm having is I don't get to attempt this again right away. I have to go through the effort of making it up to this again. And so I don't get to develop muscle memory on this as quick as I'd like. I think that's the problem here. Good. Oh, this part is cursed. Okay. Oh no. Oh! <laughs> What fresh hell is this? Okay, scroll. Let's just see. Um. Okay, let me just drink some water and think about this for a minute. This is the furthest I've been. I don't want to brick it, but I probably will. Oh, dude. Um. This is the furthest I've gotten. Oh, the low ceiling jumps. <laughs> These low ceiling jumps are going to be the end of me. Ah. It's another one of these jumps where I just have a 50-50 chance of making it. Everything else would be fine. Remove those two jumps, I have this. Oh, that was dumb. You, I'm still doing this stage, but I guess I've progressed a bit more, Sabine. Ever so slightly. And then just talking about how the conversation I had where it was pointed out that it was weird that Mario in the new trailer has an American accent but then when he does his little wahoo thing it's like Charles Martinet who is doing an accent and realistically you wouldn't have both going on it's like you'd either have an American accent or you would speak like the bing bing wahoo man not both. I wonder if they're gonna put, um, like, the jump sound effects. The video game sound effects, I should say. Like, if they're gonna be a thing. Yeah, 
Yeah, my part is straight up just don't hesitate, otherwise you will lose. I feel like for this part, it's a liability for me to scroll ahead. It just throws me off from it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, block me, yes. Yes! Oh my god. I have frames! Ugh. Go! How is this not the end? No! Oh, come on! Ugh. Please let me at least get up to the checkpoint. That's, that's all I ask at this point. I'm just glad there's no dragon coins. It, it just, they're not in this stage, thankfully. that will be another layer of complexity to this is just, oh yeah, collect the coins along the way. Catch some sleep. Alright, Savi, no worries. Thanks for the chat and for hanging out. Good night, and uh, yeah, hopefully, see you around. <sighs> as frustrated as I might sound, I'm still enjoying the stage compared to the previous one. It's just coming down to two jumps, that's what I'm seeing. Maybe I should play the Warrior Land games for Christmas, that's like another idea. I think I'd have fun with that. I haven't played them since I was a kid, so... It would fit in line with the, the Christmas tradition. That, that was poor. Oh, no. That was bad. Hang on. I'm just gonna adjust the mic a little. Okay. I do all these impressive jumps in the night. Oh no. Okay, just... I'm not gonna iframe through it. Just... Just... Ah, I didn't do the high bounce. This is taking longer than the previous stage. I think the previous stage took me like about two hours. And we've just hit that now. Or are about to anyway. But 
This doesn't feel like it's dragging for me. Because, I don't know, they just feel like they're just precise jumps, it's not really... I don't need to do something specific, if that makes sense, and I don't need knowledge, it's more just do the jump. Which, mentally, I can deal with better than... <sighs> that segment in the previous stage where... Oh, dude, it was killing me with the Yoshi, that part. <laughs> well, you have to perfect frame grab a uh, Galoomba as it comes out of its recovery. And if you don't, you die. Like, either way, you die. That was not cool. I enjoy stuff where it, it doesn't require an explanation. It's... Through the basic controls of the game, I can figure out what to do. And deduce it. If someone has to write an explanation, or I have to look up a video on how to pull off a, a particular thing, I don't know. I don't think that's very good design, in my opinion. That might be a bit of a hot take, but... The stuff that I personally enjoy is things that are intuitive and you can figure it out on your own without the need of someone explaining. No, no, what you need to do, here, there's this little quirk of the Mario game engine that um, if you do this at this particular moment, it'll actually do this unintentional thing and then, you know, we're going to design a level mechanic around it. Yeah, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't personally enjoy that stuff. Almost messed that up. Ah, it's okay. Honestly, sometimes I feel like being big is a liability. I should have gone. It's okay. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Yeah, I think the mushrooms in the stage are kind of designed just to mess you up. gonna say I'll be lucky to be able to hang on to it anyway. Yep. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. I should have waited. I got too impatient. I 
wonder how long the stage is. You would hope that if there's no checkpoint, the stage is short. So it's either I'm gonna reach the end of the stage or there's a checkpoint. I'm kind of concerned because it gives you 900 seconds to do the whole thing, which... Hmm... This might be something that I'll need to split up into two parts, I don't know. <laughs> I'm always conscious <laughs> of when I'm- I feel like I'm taking too long to do something. Ah, oh, wow, that's the first time I've messed that up. Particularly if you're watching, it's just... It feels like a cop-out if I don't achieve something. <laughs> But at the same time, I don't want to spend five hours on this, it's just... It's kind of unfortunate that the only stages I have to pick from currently are just nightmares. But I guess, um, this is the lesser of evils for me. Phone's going on, I need to mute it so people who have this work messaging program don't think their phones are going off. Assuming you can hear it. Okay. There we go. That's how I know that it's, uh, yeah, it's Europe time. Ah, oh, that was bad. I don't know if anyone else is like this, but the way I am with games, when something's difficult, and it, in it involves muscle memory, there'll be a point at which, briefly, I'll lose the mu muscle memory and start messing up. And then I sort of have to relearn it just a little bit, and then it, it comes back, I don't know. It might just be as well that it's gotten a little warmer here, and I might go flip on the air conditioning. It's been really weird here. Um, usually around this time of year it is pretty hot, but it's almost been like winter, and I put the word winter in the biggest of quotation marks, because Australian winter is not winter. But, I mean, raining, miserable... No temperatures above 20 Celsius. Okay. 
Oh, I thought I was going down that hole. That's fine. Okay, didn't eat it. Eat it, go, just go. Yeah, low ceiling. <laughs> okay. Dude, these low ceiling jumps. I think I, I would be up to the checkpoint if it weren't for those jumps. Like everything else I got down more or less, it's always the variable of this jump here. And the other, the other one that I just died to in the previous life. Thing. Oh, that was like right on the edge. I thought I'd mistimed it. Take a minute. <sighs> okay. It's a, it's a liability to be big there. <laughs> that jump sucks. Ugh. It's almost like I should just be small at that point, but then... Uh, I don't know. It's weird because these are low ceiling jumps as well, but I have no problem with them. Like, some for some reason... Those jumps there have registered with me from a muscle memory point of view, but then that one there, it doesn't. Maybe because I stop, that might be it. Whereas in the other one, I kind of just run through it and then it's generally fine. Oh, wow, that... okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, it's a safety net I don't really need right now. Then I get it back anyway. Okay, don't really need it. At least I don't think so. I 
I needed it. I need a spin jump there. Oh, come on. Really? Okay. I think for this part I should be small, but I got my wish there. Okay, go. Oh, you dick. Oh, don't you dare. I don't understand how this is not over. jump. Okay. Dude, how's this not over? Yes. Cool. Ah! The <laughs> no. I hope this is just a, lo a long segment and then the stage is over. <sighs> Alright, that's the furthest I've been now. jump. I'm gonna have to get more lives. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get more lives. I think in any other stage it would have been a checkpoint already. Yeah, that was my bad.
This is one of the last stages, so I guess it's understandable that's this hard, but still. I, I take my hat off to anyone that speedruns this. I can get through all the stages that I've had problems with, just like first try and in a reasonable manner. <laughs> I don't know how, but all right, it's cool. Oh, there. Oh, damn it. I could tell that was wrong. Okay, if nothing else, checkpoint. I could. I could check how far away I am from it. There are... There are guides to these stages, thankfully, so... I would hope that I'm close to whatever the result of this is. Whether it's a checkpoint or the end of that segment. It's like, that's gonna hit me right away. <sighs> Damn it. I feel bad about that. I, sh I shouldn't have died to that. I just needed to be a little more patient. Alright, after this death I'm gonna look at how far I have left to go. <laughs> just... I'm either going to be happy, or I'm going to be very, very sad. Sometimes the timing of that just 
really messes you up. Alright. Let me look at this. What's it called? It's called the Depraved Stronghold. I just want to see. I want to see what I'm up to. Uh, hang on. I think I'm I'm about to be sad. <laughs> I think I'm about to be sad. Let's just see. Okay, there, there are the statues. Uh, uh, Alright, let's just... So, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm watching still. Okay, so I'm up to the part where I died, the, the flame pillar. So after the flame pillars, then... Oh... Um... So the next segment, that part that I got up to, that's not even halfway. Yeah, I may have changed my mind about this stage, just in terms of me liking it. <laughs> this is way too much stuff to go through, what do you mean? Oh, no! Wow, okay. Yeah. So, what I got up to is halfway through the next segment. It's about the halfway point. There are parts of it that don't look bad, but then there's a couple of parts in particular I'm like, oh dude, I don't know. I don't see myself reaching this waypoint checkpoint <laughs> anytime soon. It was both good to know, but demoralizing slightly in at the same time. This is one of these stages that end up as like a, a TikTok or a YouTube short, where someone runs through it in one, one shot, no death. And it looks impressive, but it probably took them hours to be able to get up to the point where they can do that. Yeah, I don't know. I might have to split this up. It was not my intent to spend three hours on one stage, so... From a progression point of view, it's... I have made progress. It's just the stage is extremely long. It is beyond what it should be. Like, realistically, at those pillars, that's where the checkpoint should be, but it's not. Yeah, I hesitated. That's my own fault. It didn't even shoot. Good. I can see why Pat was like, oh, <laughs> this stage. Yeah, okay, I, I understand now. Ignorance was bliss. I was like, nah, this, this stage is fine. I'm having fun with it. I, I'm enjoying the platforming challenge. I'm not realizing just how long it is. <sighs> Alright, fine. I'll have to set a, uh... What's the word? Like a time budget for this. 
If I can't get this in the no next half hour, we will put a pin in it. As I don't want this to be the whole stream. That was my bad. I forgot to scroll across, but it doesn't matter too much. So yeah, time budget of another half hour. I think that's reasonable. It just means I'm gonna have to play this tomorrow, because I, I can't let this leave muscle memory. there's still a second half of the stage to consider and I have no doubt that it's not going to ease up it's just going to be more of this from start to finish right this is how, no, how you can tell it's a long stage for the person that was doing the video of how to do the stage, like... Without hesitation, going through the stage pretty much perfectly, it's six minutes. That's a- that's a long stage. That is quite a long stage. I haven't seen anything in the second half of the stage. I, I stopped when it got to the checkpoint. person does it without um, taking damage as well, that's kind of the other part where it's like, there's areas where I will 100%, at least initially, I'm going to need like a, a safety net, otherwise I'm, I'm not getting through it. So that's, that's gonna be something. everything about that jump. <laughs> Just... Even though I watched what what's coming up, there's there's no way I'm going to remember. It's just there's a lot going on. <laughs> what a stream this is gonna be. It's just hey, you wanna watch me attempt the same level? For like three hours? Have I got a stream for you? I 
to be fair, I have been talking about stuff, but... From a progression point of view, it is <laughs> a little bit abysmal. starting to get the uh, the point at which I start forgetting things because exhaustion's kicking in. Not forgetting, but muscle memory. Ugh, it's gone. Hey, Ona, thank you for the raid. <laughs> I wish you were raiding into something that wasn't so repetitive, but welcome anyway. How's it going? Damn it. You're playing Borderlands 3, that's repetitive. Okay. Repetitive in the sense that... I'm gonna be doing the same part of the level, because progression is difficult. At least in Borderlands, yeah, I would imagine that, uh, at least some goal was achieved, some item was acquired, something where at the end of the stream you can be like, okay, in summary, at the start of the stream, I had this, and now I have this. I can't say I'll be able to do that. <laughs> Borderlands 3 is padded and boring. Yeah, I can understand that. I've only played the first one properly. But, I mean, I think it can be fun if you're playing with a group of people. I think that's the appeal of it. I, w I certainly wouldn't play the game solo. Wow, you buffoon. I enjoyed the first one. I think my comment would be... By the end of the game... Um, I guess I was feeling biome exhaustion, if that makes sense. Like, the environments in one are basically the junkyard until the very end. The, the last area is the difference, where it's, it's not that anymore. That would be my only critique of it. But I played with a group of friends and it was fun. This is, uh, this is one of these stages that if you get in Mario Maker, it's one of those viewer levels. But the creator just makes the streamer do a bunch of precise movements, and then that's the stream for two, three hours. Assuming they don't give up on it. Ah. Oh. Mistimed it. Just, it's okay. I don't really need the mushroom. Mental break for a minute. Um, have you seen the new Mario movie trailer, Aona? If so, thoughts? My thoughts on it, still not convinced with Chris Pratt, and an excellent point was brought up by a friend of mine who uh, is Italian. He was like, 
Chris Pratt is doing an American accent, but then it's strange that he does the Wahoo, which is Charles Martinet doing an accent. And if it was for if it was for real, the character would be one or the other and not both. Like if he's doing an American accent, he should be saying Wahoo like an American and not like Charles Martinet's kinda impersonation accent thing. I was like, huh. You know what? You're right. That is a bit weird. <laughs> so yeah, anyway. You're just not convinced at all by any of it. Yeah, I mean to me, it just, it looks like it's just going to be Mario being a buffoon for the majority of the movie for the sake of comedy. Um, which, it's going to be fine as a kid's movie. Just me as an adult. Um, there are some kids' movies where it's just, how do I put it? It's kind of like, um... I wouldn't say annoying, but kind of like how the rabbits were always associated with just like, oh, the just lowest common denominator humor in terms of kids. Um, I mean, I can appreciate slapstick, right? But at a certain point, it just becomes excessive and it just, unless the trailer is, okay, they're showing every single funny moment in the movie. Then it's like fine, it won't be. But if it's like every scene, Mario's being a buffoon, that's where I'm like, eh. I don't know. Anyway. I'll probably go to see it because I have uh, younger kids in my family and they'll be excited nonetheless, but. I think Jack Black as Bowser and Charlie Day as Luigi is more or less the reason I would watch it. I don't really have an opinion of Princess Peach's uh, voice actress. The only thing I will have to say about Peach is like... It's cool that they're giving her a personality and having her actually do something. And not just being the cliché damsel in distress. But it'll be a bit weird if after the movie she just goes back to being that. Like, I think if they're going to do that, they need to carry it forward in the games. Because if this is an origin story, then all it's going to end up being is, oh, Mario grew as a person, but then Luigi still remains scared, you know, he doesn't grow as a character ever, and Pr Princess Peach goes from being strong and independent to just being constantly kin kidnapped and not doing anything. <laughs> so, I don't know. I might be overthinking it a little, but yeah, it, I think it would be a bit jarring if a kid would to really enjoy Princess Peach as a character and then go and play a game and she's just non-existent slash just in danger constantly. I don't know. I just hope that it's not something they do just for the sake of the movie. And that it is indeed like a shift in her character. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs> wow, that was that was bad. So this makes sense now. This is why the stage has 900 seconds. It's just because it's it's stupidly long. I don't mind it being long, but they really should have added a second checkpoint. This is a bit much to have to go through just to get to the first checkpoint. These things are such dicks. <laughs> sometimes they don't fire for ages and then sometimes it's right away. It's just... You 
can never tell what it's gonna do. Yeah, like right there. I, I could have gone. But no. This is exhausting as it looks. <laughs> Alright. See, at this point here, this is where the checkpoint should be. But it's not. I have to go through another segment that's equally as long to get to it. So I can see now why people don't like this stage. It's not that it's tricky. It's way too long. It is just way too long. Too much stuff to have to go through just to get to a point where it's like, okay, I'm safe. And now I have to do all of that again. Alright, I'm time boxing it to like another 12 minutes, so it's like three hours perfectly, and then I'll just have another go at it another day, because exhaustion's starting to kick in. Fatigue, I should say. I know it's a little anticlimactic, but I, I hope you do appreciate just how much I've had to go through to even get up to that point right there. If this wasn't in a ROM hack, like as part of a completion thing, and this was something that came up in Mario Maker, I would have skipped it like an hour ago. If not... No, I would have skipped it like after about 40 minutes. Because I would have been like, yeah, this is cool, but dude, you should have put another checkpoint in. This is way too long. That would have been my critique. It's like, I, I can see myself finishing it, but I just... I cannot go through that process where I'm multiple hours and then I just have to do thing in a, things in a first shot manner. Like, nah. So the only reason I'm being so stubborn with it is because this is one of the last levels I have left to do in this ROM hack and then it's done, so that's pushing me to get it done. Otherwise, in a vacuum, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I would have stopped already. Oh, come on. What? No. <sighs> Alright, whatever. Oh, wow. No! Oh! I was about to say that was the first time I've made it as big. Big metal. But I suppose for this part here, it'd be somewhat of a liability to be big. Okay, um, I'm gonna get more lives just because I'm, I don't want to game over. I'm just worried that maybe I may have done something that I don't want to lose from a progression point of view. Give me a minute. doing this um tomorrow i'm gonna be playing more zelda 2 on youtube the uh 
enhanced version of Zelda 2. It's effectively a remake someone's done where they put it in a modern game engine and um, they've cleaned it up, added a lot of extra content. I'm kind of surprised at the amount of extra content it has. So I'll be doing more of that on YouTube. I've set up the stream, so. Basically my username on YouTube, look it up. <laughs> It'll be there. I've been having a lot of fun with it. I thought it was just going to be a, a playthrough of the game with just like a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and then they've cleaned up the quest, but there's a lot of new stuff that I'm pretty surprised at. The game is a lot more fleshed out, like some of the inconsequential quests have been replaced with an actual quest. Like that quest where you have to get the the water. <laughs> it's just walk up to the drinking fountain and collect the water. Such a minor quest has been replaced with you have to find out why there's no water coming to the town and you get this whole new area and boss. It's pretty neat. So I'm looking forward to what else it's added because now I, I have to treat it like I'm playing a new game. There's just that much new stuff in it. Oh. <laughs> wow, I, I haven't messed that part up in ages. Okay. Game, please. I think a cape would definitely make this section easier. The problem is I have the previous section to kind of <laughs> have to survive. And the stage at the start replaces whatever power-up you have with a mushroom right away, so you can't even take a second cape in. It's, uh, yeah, it's not great. Okay, this is a first. Oh, I, oh, I see. Yeah, no, no, no. If you're big, yep, you get punished. <laughs> you get punished. It changes what I have to do for that part. I have to... Ugh, I don't even know. I guess I have to jump sooner, I think. This is one thing this level creator does in their levels is just having a power up gives you 
a safety net, but at the same time, there's a lot of jumps where it will change the way where you have to approach it and make it more difficult. Which... I mean, it's an interesting design choice. Right now, I'm not a fan of it, but I can appreciate it. I've done even better than before, but now look, the problem is this right here. It's okay. I'm gonna get a mushroom here anyway. I have to scroll across. I, I, I can't see what I'm doing here. Oh, this jump is disgusting. Alright, I frame it. Just go. incorrect. Ah, oh, damn it. Now that's the furthest I've been. <laughs> Still nowhere near a checkpoint. <sighs> Alright. But I guess if I was to... I did say three hour budget and we're pretty much at that budget now, so if nothing else... I've made it to a whole new section. <sighs> okay, according to the recording, there's six minutes left, so okay, I will I will respect that. I just don't want the whole stream to be this, so yeah. <laughs> In an ideal world that would have been the checkpoint. break. Okay. Oh, 
I'm still not sure how to do that jump that I had to iframe through. I might very well have to watch just how that is done. It's definitely one of these things that once I've done it a couple times, I'll be able to do. Much like the rest of the stage. It's, this is all the stages. It's just muscle memory the stage. Okay. It's an idea I want to try, not on this life necessarily, but maybe the next one. Okay, let me try it on this life. I think I have an idea. Because maybe it might help. The problem I have with the cape is just, it's, it's not useful in this part. If anything, it causes problems. However, I'll also do this instead. Is that plan? It's the falling of the cape that's the problem. Like it does make things easier from that perspective. But I have to adjust how I'm playing. <laughs> no, don't fly. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't fly. Okay, so now I get to see how it affects this, because... I think it makes it harder. I'm pretty convinced it will. Yeah, it just throws me off too much. Because the descent gets altered and then I have to try and compensate. It's, it's too complicated. Okay. That was just a little curiosity because I know it would be useful in the second half of that section. But I guess I would have to hang on to it the whole way through without losing. Which, it's, it's doable. It's just... Oh, okay. It's not worth it. It's just going to tire me out too much. Nine thirty on the dot. Yeah, I mean, I'm giving this until the three-hour mark, which is okay. I guess let's do one more attempt. Watching from bed. Psh, Friday. Come on. I can definitely see myself finishing this stage, it's just... It's way too much effort than it needs to be, it's just... 
there needed to be a, a second checkpoint in this. I think where they have the checkpoint currently is just way too much to have to go through. It's three whole minutes of precision platforming, assuming you do it without stopping. That's just... No, that's too annoying. Thanks. Alright, this will be my last attempt. <laughs> I wanted to at least make it up to the end there, but... I've made progress, it's just the stage is stupid. It's making me just get to the point where I do three minutes of uninterrupted platforming. Excuse me. I had to sneeze, had to mute. <laughs> it's throwing me off already, so let's just... It's not great when you're trying to do something precise and then you're distracted by, like, an itchy nose. You're trying your best not to sneeze. <laughs> Haven't seen me and Isaac in a while. I mean, I played it earlier in the week. Just haven't been in the mood for it, that's all. Wow, no, that's not going to be the last life. The last life has to be something where I don't die on something like that. I'm not even sure what happened there. Kieran on YouTube? Yeah. I don't play Isaac on YouTube. I mean, I'll just go with whatever I feel like playing. Ah. Oh. Okay, I'm focusing. Shh. Silence. I'm going. To, I'm not. Don't silence. I'm just going to watch. <laughs> I'm just going to watch the screen and not look at chat. For this last life, at the very least. Physical exhaustion kicking in. I'm definitely gonna have to play this tomorrow so I don't lose the muscle memory of what I've done. Damn it. I just want one more crack at that second section, that's all, and I'll be content.
<sighs> okay, here we go. Course corrected. <laughs> that was not a good one to go on. There we go. I can't say I've ever had both power-ups at this point, but it's not like it matters too much. Ugh. It's okay. I... Dude, like... After this section here, that's where the checkpoint should be. I'm sorry, it's just... You consider all the shit I just had to get to... Get through to get to this point. And then there's still... I have to do more or less equal. But after this, it's just... No. This stage needs to... Oh, this timing. What is this timing? Hang on. Scroll off. I'm just gonna go. Oh. Alright, that jump- that jump there I need to look up how to do, because that- that is insane. But that was the last attempt. I'm content enough with that. Get out of there. I like the stage from a challenge perspective. I think the problem is it's just way too long. They really needed a second checkpoint there because that's for the three whole minutes. If you're doing everything without stopping, you have to go three whole minutes of just that precise level of platforming to get to the checkpoint. It's, it's a bit of a tall order. But I can, I can see myself realistically getting there. I think if I play this tomorrow, I'll have everything that I've learnt today and I'll be rested because now it's like mental exhaustion, right? And I'll do a lot better. But... I'm a firm believer of, like, walking away from something for a little bit and then coming back and doing better. Okay, well, that was, uh, Janked Up Mario Party for today. I will do more of this tomorrow. Um... I might do it before I do Zelda 2 on YouTube, because tomorrow I'm going to be playing more of the enhanced version of Zelda, the Zelda 2. Sentences. <laughs> so, I guess we'll make it a retro night, so I'll play a bit of this here, and then I'll go do some Zelda 2. Which, if you don't know, uh, someone's remade Zelda 2 in a modern game engine. So, it's still 2D, but they've fleshed that out a lot more. They've removed stuff that is kind of obscure. They've expanded the content, added quests, stuff like heart containers exist in the game. You can turn into a chicken. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in that game, is you can turn into a chicken. So, I'll be doing more of that tomorrow along with this, but uh, this will be on Twitch and then I'll do Zelda on YouTube as I've been doing stuff over there as well. So, hope to see you around for that. I'm not done. 
It's Friday night. I want to do a bit of Diablo 2 grinding. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, but I want to do a bit of that. So that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the evening if you want to stick around for that. But otherwise, yeah. Thanks for watching Jank.MarioPod.